Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Good morning, real estate. This is Jeremiah's J Man Manero with J Man Speaks coming to you live. And we are here in our San Diego uh, headquarters. You can see the beach in the background, but we are bringing in Marky Lemons Rowell, be a satellite with our high tech television. <laughs> She's from coming into it with uh, from Miami, Florida. She's on vacation. We appreciate her. Always committed to good morning real estate. Uh, so go ahead. Um, kind of messes up the rotation because I'm over here. We got Marky in the middle. Where's she at? She's in the middle. So go ahead, Marky. Introduce yourself. Then we'll go to Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> What's cracking world? I'm your girl, Marky Lemons Rao, real estate keynote speaker, international best selling author. And this is my first trip out since Friday, March the 13th, 2020. I had to test everything out, TSA clear, realized that my passport expired and that I need to get my youngest son TSA because he is now 14. So he can't go with me through TSA, uh. but he can go with me through clear. So we testing everything out. Well, Marky, we got that air horn for you. Well, welcome out of the building. Yes. <laughs> we, we got Carrie Joe Little. Go ahead, girl. Well, good morning, everyone. I Let me tell you, you try to do all these new setups to make sure everything works. And I'm just glad to be here. And let me say, Marky, yeah, yeah. I thought that if... You had TSA and you booked everything your kids could go through with you because I booked everything with my kids and they just went right on through with me. I think there's an age where no, they, they have to be. Uh, they changed the rules so once they turn fourteen, they're not allowed to use TSA. So he could use Clear, and they escorted us through the gate. But then he has to take his computer and his shoes off, so they can go to a certain point. So we still had to take shoes and a uh, computer out of the bag. Yeah, and uh, I just want to shout out if you're traveling, clear is where it's at. I just go like this, Ooh. scan my eyeballs, and they're like, oh, Mr. Monero, come with me. They go right up to TSA, and they're like, he's clear. I'm like, I see all the TSA pre-check people like, hating. you could feel that. <laughs> well, you know what? So we went to the front of the line because I have clear, and you can still travel under clear and be 14 years of age. It was just... Look, it was the fact that we had to take our shoes off and take our computer out the bag. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Not on the next trip. <laughs> well, um, you said I guess not on the next trip. You take it. You take the headphones on the next off. One. I took my headphones off because I can hear you better. I can hear you uh -oh. better. Well, you what do we have in the news? Let me see if I got your news. Oh, here we go. You know what? Let me say this before we get started. Oh. Oh. Go ahead, Marky. Go, go, no, no. go, go. Get it, girl. So I was going to relaunch the ADPR, the Accredited Distressed Property Representative. And I mean, like I was all, I was this close. And then it hit me. Marky, people aren't going to need to do a short sale. Why would you come back with a full, full-fledged short sale course? So right. I, I just want us to kind of think about that before we get into this news. Okay. And you know, Marky, you're right because... Um, I got to listen to Dr. Yoon again yesterday and, you know, he went, he now is saying per Dr. Yoon, go follow him on LinkedIn, that the feds aren't expected to increase interest rates till 2023. But he did say that you could expect to see them at three and a half percent, near three and a half percent by the fall. So buyers still have the ability to, you know, there's, there's a, there's a great opportunity for people to buy at a, a great interest rate. In addition to that, you know, the people that eventually have to sell, if they are going to be, um, it, we will say they're in pre foreclosure, they might not be underwater. Right. So you're absolutely so, right. Can, and it, but look, so go ahead. Can we just get the language straight? They're not really in I, that pre foreclosure thing just kills me. It really just means a notice of default has been filed for failure to make three payments. Right. That I mean, I mean, oh, it's so much time in between that property truly being a foreclosure. It just what we're getting ready to look at a is a market because foreclosure there is means a the bank is taking it right. 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 So the, it, so the yeah. pre phase is only a public notification. Right. So that's all it is. It's a public notification that the world now knows that you've missed multiple mortgage 
payment. But guess what? So would you say that the this pre foreclosure is, a- is when the bank <laughs> files the list pendants? Yes, pending litigation. <laughs> there you go. Play the music, Jay Man, because we keep oh, interrupting. Okay, folks, this just in. We have Carrie with the news. <laughs> oh, there we go. So, eviction moratorium should be lifted by the end of June. I will say this, if it is extended, but you had an eviction notice pre-pandemic, pre-moratorium in place, you can start the eviction process. Please talk to your attorneys before you start that process. Um, So yeah, so prior to March of 2020, you, you can evict if the order was prior to the pandemic. So those are things you need to know. Uh, and, and we've heard it before, new construction, um, people, there are more, there's more new construction south in the south uh, states. We see that here in Illinois, but, but what we're finding is more people are buying that second home in other states. And we're finding that people are buying that second home with cash cash and we're finding people are putting offers in with all cash even in our state so some you know i had this conversation with a friend where where's all where where are people coming up with all this money people have money but they like to use the bank's money but in order to avoid a multiple offer situation people are coming up with cash and in addition to that here's the challenge for all of you that think fha is a bad word Just because someone has to go FHA doesn't mean they don't have money. Someone might have to go FHA because maybe they had a bankruptcy or maybe once upon a time they did have to sell their house short. So now they only qualify for FHA, but they might have money in the bank. So they might put 50% down to beat all of your offers. So please make sure for those of you that are listing agents that you look at those FHA offers. And if you are thinking of moving out of any state to go south, new construction might be your best option. I'm Carrie Little with the news. Thank you, Carrie. <laughs> I, I just want to say, I don't know if you guys noticed that Carrie was talking like this and I was like Mr. Robot so uh, but I'll I'll give you a a current experience that we had with new construction I always joke that New Yorkers are realtors of the year for the state of Florida because we have so many clients relocating from New York to Florida we have a client just closed yesterday building a house seven months it's gonna take for that house to be finished we're typically in most markets it's 120 days Uh, it just because the builders are backed up and then we're seeing people that are in contract The builder going, hey, we're going to need another hundred grand. Why? Because because we can (laughs) and you have no other place to go and you're already in contract and you already put 10 percent down so that these these are all things to consider when you're, uh, you know, working with your clients and and building is a great option. I love working with people from blueprints to their dream home. I mean, that is like one of the best processes ever where they can really build what they want. You're right, Jay, man. We've seen it here in Illinois where builders have had to go up on prices because the, you know, lumber has increased. Someone said that they're going to steal, steal beams because of the cost of lumber. So you're absolutely right. Builders are coming (laughs) back and reading. You're saying like they're going to start stealing lumber from each other. Steel beams. Steel beams. Oh, someone posted a meme yesterday that they are robbing uh, the truck drivers who carry the wood. (laughs) So it was a time, you know, you would just see that truck. You wouldn't, you wouldn't think anything about it, but due to the rising cost of lumber, it was a little meme on the other day and they was like, so (laughs) how do we steal this wood? (laughs) So you will, we'll probably see an increase in that and they'll be able, I hate to say this, they'll be able to get that wood off real fast, real fast. Uh, But you would never think that wood, we would steal wood. Yo, 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 I got that wood. I got that wood. Wood. I got, I got that hot wood, baby. You got them two by fours for you. <laughs> That's what the world has come to. Um, oh, so I'm down here in uh, Miami. Um, a lot of us know that 
uh, is this, uh, right down the street that the condo mm -hmm. collapsed. And so what we're seeing mm -hmm. is that that one building is likely going to change building reg uh, regulations right, we know here in Miami, but potentially even around the world uh, because it is a catastrophe and it, it spans for blocks because they've had to reroute traffic and everything. So there's kind of like a little somber mode here uh, as a result. Well, and I read an article that they're looking at the building. Some of the people are vacating the building that was built by the same person or, or company or whatever, by the same company with the same construction at the same time. Some of those people are just moving out. They're like, yo, I'm not going to wait for it. And, you know, people that are staying are saying, oh, well, it's not the same. It didn't have the same whatever, whatever affected that property structurally. So you're right. I, I read the same article like – Things are going to change in its 40 years and a property hasn't been re-inspected for its structural integrity or anything like that. Uh, that's, you know, and, and just to throw something else into, into the mix, I was on Clubhouse yesterday and they were talking about hemp creep. I don't even know if I'm saying it right. Michael, your boy. Your, your, My Michael. boy, Michael. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael Malcolm. Yeah. Um, the hemp master. What's, the say that again. Hemp creep. So it's like instead of concrete, they can make. A concrete like product with hemp does it what does it do better so i mean i, I get well it's, it's a renewable I, resource it's just as strong it's easier to find you know in countries like i think that's the conversation came up because puerto rico so you know everything's concrete in a lot of the caribbean countries and there's a shortage and it's an island you know so it's makes it difficult to find the things in hempcrete you find that hemp make hemp creep I, I will oh, be my happy to post this definition in in the feed on Good Morning Real Estate. It says it's a composite of all kinds of stuff, things I can't even pronounce. Oh, there we go. Hmm. Hempcrete or hemp preparing is a brand is a mixture of hemp herds and lime sand. You know, this is what I always say. How does it work? It works great. You build with it. All right, folks. <laughs> you know, I, you know, have, I, um, I, I watch because, you know, I always say a solid foundation. There's nothing like solid rock up here in Illinois. Well, Dwayne Hirsch, who's a realtor out of the Chicagoland area. Uh, so Michael is a he's actually a cannabis influencer. Right. But Dwayne Hirsch actually is a part of a hemp farm so he's kind of relocated and we get to live life on the farm every single day uh through hemp and so you know i often love the fact that we have people in real estate who have definitely diversified uh their businesses over the last couple of years and that cannabis space and the hemp space are definitely two of those spaces i've seen especially with those with the entrepreneurial spirit who tend to be a little younger yeah, and I know yeah. uh, in New York where it just became legal, there's tremendous opportunity for those of you who are in the commercial sector. As soon as those licenses hit, they're going to need places, distribution points, and all these ancillary businesses that are developed from it. Uh, so keep your eyes open. I, I want to chime in on that because I've had a couple of people reach out to me in that cannabis space. And one of the what I love about commercial practitioners is that they understand what their niche is in the commercial space. Every referral I have made in regards to cannabis, they have turned it down because they said that is not what I specialize in. I do not know the rules and regulations and I'm not trying to pivot. So that is what I love about people in the commercial space. They tell you straight up, hey, that's yeah. not what I do. Uh, as opposed to us in residential who consistently say, oh, we do it all. Yeah, well, no, there are people, yeah, no, I can do it all. But there are people in that commercial space, they've turned down humongous cannabis and hemp contracts because they don't specialize in it. Well, and I would say we'll tag Michael Malcolm, I guess, in the comments real quick because he is a, a specialized a specialist in this. But one of the things he was talking about because I interviewed him on, on my uh, Friday broadcast was that when you apply for your license, you have to have a location already selected or an option for a lease or purchase something already. And sometimes they're purchasing stuff speculative that their license is going to get approved. So be thinking of that. There is, you know, somebody might – you got big, a lot of money coming in. They, they might do five, 10, 15 locations uh, because it's, you know, in New York, it's it's brand new. I think it was April they legalized it or decriminalized yeah, we it. We have specific rules in Illinois already, but I just Googled New York and I don't see the rules as fast, but 
Uh, you can possess Mark, up to two right? ounces for personal usage. Look at not to say that I ever did it, but if I did, two ounces would be way too much for personal usage. I'd be like this. They're coming. Yo, Carrie, Marky, they're coming for us. Let's go. Yo, they're coming to get your kid. So, you <laughs> I'm pretty progressive, guys, but let me say this. I was not a weed smoker. I still am not a weed smoker. I smoked marijuana the first time for New Year's Eve 20, 2000 because they said the world was going to come to an end, and I figured I should have a high experience. That, that was it? That was your end-of-world so, drug that you chose? Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that was like, oh, let me go out and try this marijuana so, out. And here's the craziest thing high. about it. So my girls is like, oh, this straight. I'm like, oh, is this supposed to be fly weed? They was like, yeah. And I'm like, well, I don't feel high. This was the mistake. Someone <laughs> said, well, you got to get high again to know you was high this time. I said, this will not be my drug of choice. <laughs> if, if it's a delay, yeah, oh. I got to do it again to know if it worked this time. Um, so here's well, let's, why let's, I cut. don't. We kind of went, went down a rabbit hole, but let's let's go back to the rental moratorium. And I think it's a great opportunity for you to reach out to any investor clients that you have, people that own rental properties. I say this every month, but you guys aren't doing it. It's really easy. Go into your, your, your uh, whatever you're using for your tax record. Look for people that have their billing address is different from the property address. That means that they don't live there. They're not owner occupied. And I can tell you from personal experience, I have I have a property that hasn't sold one property that hasn't sold because of the tenant and she's acting real tough because she knows about the moratorium on evictions but come you know as soon as that's over she's gonna be like oh well will you uh we'd we be happy to show the property you know she keeps confirming showings and then pretending like she's not home and stuff so reach out because they may be in pain right now uh they may be ready to either you know bake make those properties vacant so you could put them on the market uh i know we 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 had investors come to us and say hey could you put this on the market with a tenant in there that doesn't want to show it and that is not paying? I'm like, we could, but you're going to have to discount it so much. It's probably not worth it. Just sit on it and, and hold it and wait. And, you know, let me say this for those of you that have um, either tenants or you're a landlord. What a lot of people don't know is that there are resources out there for the consumer um, whether you're a landlord or a tenant, if you really, oh, yeah. really, really can't afford your rent, work with your um, local community, work with your local government, because there are resources out there to help you pay your rent. No one wants to put anyone out on the street, but we also know that landlords need to pay their mortgages as well. I'm not saying I just got a text message, just saying. <laughs> so let me, yeah. let me say this. Um, I, in my monthly coaching class, I had an epiphany last week when we, a couple of things we know, we know that tenants have not paid their rent. What I'm telling realtors to do, and I want you to do this today, fellow realtors, is I need you to identify what is one of the biggest building property issues in your municipality. So in the city of Chicago, we have uh, two to four unit buildings. They have these back porches. Back porches are huge issues in the city of Chicago. <clears throat> so we know these are investment properties. We know they aren't receiving their rent payment. We also know that they probably have some back porch issues. When I think about driving for dollar mastery, what I'm telling people is drive the alleys. Go and look for back porch structural issues and do direct mail campaigns to those landlords, to those investors, because a couple of things, the likelihood is they're not getting all of their rents. The second thing is they probably have a building violation and go through the Freedom of Information Act to pull those building violations. Mm -hmm. There are so many people suffering right now with their property ownership. I know we got a lot of people who want to buy and that we're in a hyper sellers market, but every person who owns is not enjoying the experience. 100%. Stop doing what everyone else does. Think outside of the box. So when I reached out to Skylar, I'm like, drive, for, drive the alley. He was like, oh, that, yeah, that's a whole nother concept. I said, because no one is doing that. Just driving through. And here's what's funny on the, in Chicago. They're pockets of nothing but multifamily buildings. So you could drive these alleys, you know, four, four blocks by four blocks. 
you could come up with 10 to 15, sometimes even more properties that you can see is a back porch issue. Right. Go in deep. Talk that pain point language to them. We know you got deferred maintenance. Heck, I just spotted it. And here's the next thing. Take a picture of one of those properties to put in your direct mail piece so that people can identify themselves when they see the picture. Yeah, and I'll say in Rochester and some of the other municipalities, we can look right online. I could look up the, the property address. There's a property portal and see if there is any open violations. I can't necessarily see what they are, but I can definitely see uh, what the violations are. We got Princess saying I should try edibles in the comments. Uh, Princess, I don't know. I ain't going to try edibles or nothing else. I need some of that cream for my joints because I run a lot and I'm 40, you know, <laughs> 40 something years old. I'll rub that cream to drink that weed water or something. Make me feel better. Uh, but let's get to the NAR 2020 report. What about that? Because it's usually they usually call it the profile of home buyers and sellers, but for this year only because 2020 was so special, they renamed it the NAR 2020 report. You know, back in 2006, one of the reasons I use social media and technology is because of the 2006 profile of buyers and sellers. It has been a go-to resource for me for 15 years, uh, just to have that broad overview of what the industry is doing. I believe that that was, Carrie, was that the report that you was digging into? Yeah, I have it in front of me now. The 2020 report. So what we want to highlight. Yeah. What you know, what's highlight. interesting is they're showing you the age of home buyers and sellers, and they're showing you, um, <clears throat> you know, the share of buyers and sellers by generation that millennial is taking millennial uh group of is 14 percent of the buyer pool but only four percent so just looking at the at the gen y group when you look at pew research based on how they use social media that's that means to me that we still need direct mail because the gen xers so the older millennials and the Gen Xers and the baby boomers and the older boomers and the silent give you the, the bigger pool of listings right now. So I'm not saying that you right. shouldn't still market to get a seller on social media because we do. Some of us still get sellers on social media, but you are more likely to generate a seller lead by operation I've got houses for sale or what's yours called, Jane? Get sellersnow.com get sellersnow.com drive the alley mastery <laughs> yeah, right I like, well, I like that Mark, yeah. boy, you can come up with some titles because gen <laughs> xers there are more gen xers selling right now um than buying but it's 25 to 24 percent the younger boomers 22 percent are selling 21 percent of the older so if you look at the boomers alone and the gen xers they're taking up a, a really close to 65% of listings. So if you're out here and you're only take, if you're only posting on Instagram, you need to go look because the Gen Xers and the baby boomers are more likely to be on Facebook, but they are more likely to collaborate with you because you sent them a direct mail piece and they could Google you and they saw you on Facebook, but they're not going to comment on Facebook because clearly I have a boomer that sent me a text based on our show today. Boomer. Listen here, boomer. Um, go ahead, Mark. You want to say something? I'm ready. I was going to say something. Um, one, I definitely agree with the direct mail piece, right? And I'm looking for property, not only for my agents, but I'm also looking for property for investment purposes. <clears throat> I think now is the time to become more strategic with a true step by step plan. And we have to talk to those pain points and I'm not going to sell my house. And so there is a percentage. What 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 generation am I? Am I? I'm 50. I'll be 51, which where where is that putting me on that age bracket? I, I do believe you are the older Gen Xer. So less, as I would say less older young, Gen Xer. Less young Gen Xer. Bl less, less young, less young like Gen Xer. Name. Thank you. Less young. And here's the problem. Me and numerous of my neighbors, we cannot afford to sell because we live in a community that is worth three to four times more than when we purchased. So that means that our right. principal interest taxes and insurance 
my, my comps right now are six, six, six. Let me say I have $800,000 comps, but my comp is not that house. So let's say my house is worth 600,000. Where am I going to live? Principal interest, taxes and insurance and in a house that is less than 15 years old. Right. And my PITI is $2,000. Like Over here by me. You can, come, you can come by me, Marky. We ain't doing that. Like <laughs> Steve is not going to spend that much money for gas. We, we're we not coming to the suburbs. That she was a condition of us getting married. She, she no, it, ain't, it, ain't, it. Ain't, 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 ain't nothing to think about. It ain't nothing to think about. It's going to alienate us from all of our, uh, you know, our friends, our family. We live yeah. next door to my husband's best friend for 40 years. So yeah, you guys yeah, have a that nice ain't going to... And now we yeah, got to have a nice group. Down. We have a nice group because yeah. we so, drive that hour so and 20 spend. minutes to come hang out. Yeah. Yeah. We, you want me to put down a couple of hundred thousand dollars to get back down. Your taxes are probably more expensive than my taxes. Yeah, yeah. that ain't. Mm -mm. And you live in Iowa. Who does that? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me, let me just uh, speak you to from like, the West Side. like, no, you know, knowing your audience and who you're prospecting <laughs> and being smarter about it. You know, Carrie talks a lot about Remind. If I'm going to prospect a neighborhood or even like a, a company like SmartZip, where they will they will direct mail a market, an MSA, a market service area, the people who are most likely or more likely to sell rather than the entire area. You're wasting money on somebody who just bought a house, somebody who's, you know, you use the data, use the predictive analytics. And I say, look, snail mail is great, but also in New York State, if you guys don't know, we couldn't do any kind of cold calling during a state of emergency and the state of emergency was just lifted. So to all my New Yorkers out there, get out there, start knocking some doors, start hitting the phones because before you were like, I can't do it because it's state of emergency. Now you got no excuse. Um, but use something like remind and say, I'm going to, I'm going to hit this neighborhood. I'm not going to hit every house cause that's what we used to do, but I'm going to go hit this neighborhood and go, man, of all these houses, there's five that have a high seller score. Right, or, or five that are more likely to sell. Be smarter, not harder. You know, work smarter, not harder. And, oh, here's what's interesting is, you know, this is, you know, how capitalism works. What goes up comes down. We could not have predicted a pandemic and we could not have predicted prices to go up 20%. But per Dr. Yoon, based on his data, and I've got all these slides that I took pictures of, next year, the he does not expect home prices to go over the the three or the four percent what we're used to seeing so if you are currently working with a seller if you are listening to us and you are thinking about selling if you are doing direct mail pieces this is why you must show up to learn because if you can't explain what is currently happening in your marketplace people are going to be mad at you next year they're going to be mad at you next year oh, because yeah. even so now we know we need inventory but if you are someone that can sell and you've been thinking about selling yeah we might have to hunt for the house you're going to buy or rent but you might not see these the home values this way for years because we couldn't predict the pandemic now I, again i don't want i'm not moving if someone knocked on the door and mark was here alone he'd be selling our house because the amount of money we could make based on what we bought for is huge. It's just a lot of work for me. Well, so if you're on the fence, or first of all, if you're a real estate agent, go look at the data for your marketplace, send out the direct mail piece, use the high sell score, look at um, the, use the reminds and the tools that J-Man is talking about, because you can actually find people that are the great candidate to sell, but learn how to explain data. Data, if you can explain data, you don't need all the fluff. Yeah. Well, and, and, and well, go ahead, Marky. I know when she, she leans in so, when she wants to talk. Right. She leans in on her TV set. I wish you could. So <laughs> check this out. I love this TV set. This is great. <laughs> so check this out. The total national homeowner equity increased by $1.5 trillion. So now let me say this, even though Stephen and I won't sell our principal residence because of the amount of equity we've accumulated, it does not mean we will not sell investment property, right? Because we're at that age that uh, medical issues start to, you, you understand what your true medical issues are. You have more than enough equity. You've made other investments in life. The investment property might not be providing the return, especially because of the rent moratorium. So just because we won't sell the principal residence, does not mean that we would not liquidate the entire investment portfolio. 
Yep. Right. And then so these are just some things. Someone, oh. Was, and take that and invest it and and just get the rate of return without the headache. So I I I want the I want people to realize this is not one size fits all. Mm-hmm. We we have to attack this and we need we need more listed inventory. Actually, I don't think we need listed inventory. We need to go and discover inventory for all these buyers we got sitting on the fence because guess what else they said? The average homeowner received five offers in 2021. Houses are selling in 17 days. 42% of homes sold above asking price in 2021. Yep. Hold up. Let me get that again. But let me just piggyback on what Marky said in regards to talking to investors that have portfolios. We we had an investor. He he cashed out of all of his uh, city of Rochester rental properties, but he's rolling that into a different strategy with vacation rentals, right? Short term rentals, depending on how you look at it, those could be more stable in our market. They're fully booked April through October because the vacation market in general is booming. Look. Marky left the house, folks. That tells you the vacation market is booming. You know, so just think a little bit outside the box. Uh, when, we, when we talk about getting sellers, my product, Get Sellers Now, uses the same thing, data. It, it, but you do it with your database. You upload it, and then it, it uses nine Ds. It's divorce, diapers, diamonds, dumpsters. I don't know. There's a lot of Ds in there. But, like, people that are getting married, people that are getting divorced, people that are um, have somebody graduating from college, somebody that got, um, when a dump, somebody orders a dumpster for a property, like a rollout dumpster, there's something going on there. It's in a state, they're emptying it out there. So it, it uses all of this data based on, on your purchasing history and your online searches to say, Hey, every day I get a, a, an email and a text saying these people in my database have a, um, seller score of 80 and above. And I called one just last week, 90, she had a 96, and it was my mom's, my mom's a hairdresser for 50 plus years. Mom, if you're watching, I'm sorry, I told everybody that you've been doing it that long, but (laughs) (laughs) uh, my mom's client, I'm like, mom, what's going on with Wendy? She's like, oh, Wendy's daughter is moving to the area. So it wasn't necessarily a seller, but Wendy was doing searches for moving trucks, was doing searches for all this other stuff for her daughter. I sent Wendy a message like, hey, a crystal ball told me. Cause I'm trying out different scripts, right? I was like, Crystal Ball told me that you might need a real estate superhero. Is that true? And she was like, Actually, I do. I'm so happy that you called. So the <laughs> when you when you look at the data, you're gonna look like Nostradamus. Like you just call the people and they're gonna be like, Wow, that's amazing. I can't believe you called. I was just thinking about selling my home. <laughs> yeah, because J Man is you know totally what? cold calling. <clears throat> well, that's a warm call. Every dumpster. Yeah. Every dumpster that we've ever ordered was for a clean out due to hoarding. That means that a sale is coming. We might not have listed the property, right? Because you you can't see past other people's trash, right? Mm-hmm. And I actually sold a house on Facebook, went the dumpster outside. As soon as we could get that first floor clean, I posted some pictures. I posted the amount of stuff that came out. I did not list the property and sold it via Facebook off of the post. An investor rolled down on me within an hour with the cash offer and paid for the cost of clean out. There you go. You can't see past other people's Jump. trash. Well, That's it. you know, there was, was I had an idea this morning while I was I was running and like, it's humid AF, I tell you. First of all, let me just say that. But the um I was running and I I I followed a videographer in our market and I'm like, he posts the videos that he does for agents before the properties hit the market. So at least if you want to jumpstart on what's coming to the market, follow the people that do video in your market because the, those dudes are posting it to their YouTube channel first. So you can at least call your client. Yo, there's a listing coming tomorrow uh, on one, two, three, anywhere street. How do you know? Crystal ball, right? Boop. That's a great tip. Like, that's a freaking awesome tip, especially if they're the source that houses it, right? So contingent upon that agreement, the copyright for your videos and your photos, I never thought that's freaking genius. 
What about if you use the the private status and you went in the private status and say, hey, I just want to let you know we got about 20 properties coming to the to multiple listing service in, in this city, Do you, you know, but they're not actively in the standard. They're not syndicated everywhere. I know we got to change the word for the consumer, but there's a few ways you can do that. Um, I know it's, sometimes I have, <laughs> that was my good idea for the day, but I, I think let's finish off with... Uh, like changing markets because what we're seeing and i had to have this conversation when you're setting up your i think you you kind of mentioned it carrie a little bit creating that that realistic expectation like hey you know what this is what i feel like the property is worth we may be able to get you full price if we're really lucky and all of our stars align perhaps we can get enough competition to get you multiple offers and get you over asking but it's got to be like everything has to fall in, fall into place because I had a property that sold this week for just asking. <laughs> and I had a happy seller because I had that conversation. Because and, and, and here's the, the other part of it. The buyer was getting 100% financing, getting an inspection, uh, and they're working with NACA, which typically in a different market, that probably wouldn't have been able to happen. So it, it, two lessons there on the buy side and on the sell side. Seller was happy. I'm like, it's great. Guess what? Full price offer. And he's like, full price? I'm like, yeah, isn't it great? Right, it's all in your delivery rather than like, oh, yeah, we, we got one offer. Let me try to leverage this against anybody else that saw the property and see if we can get over asking. Right, create those realistic expectations because I think that's coming. If you don't, you're not seeing it yet, you're going to see it if you, if you you price it wrong or if the property needs a little work or something like that. I think, you know, are you guys seeing any of that at all yet in Illinois? Uh, well, one, I'm not seeing it, but Carrie might be. You know, and I was distracted by my text messages, J-Man. You're on a news I'm broadcast, you Carrie. That, Carrie. <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm getting questions about the live. I'm getting questions oh. on my text about, about I'm getting landlord questions. Okay. Wait, so, um, and then I'm distracted because Carrie, she posted a story. So it popped up, J-Man. So come, we, we, you know what? We were distracted. We're sorry. I'm on vacation. I have. But I, can, I okay. can talk about. I can talk about what I Wait, what is on, happening on, on. in Illinois. Okay, guys. That we are uh, if, down if you're, with you're watching offers. this, say in the comments how was your market doing, and then Carrie's going to comment. But it looks like Anita <laughs> Bryant said. Well, I can say in in Chicago right now we're seeing uh, in the last three months properties are selling for twenty point seven percent over um, compared to last year. But if you look at this the last three months compared and the last three months of last year <clears throat> that would be almost 25 percent compared to 2019 in the chicagoland marketplace this is detached attached about if you look at the last two years about about 17 percent so this is today i expect this to slow down because buyers are getting frustrated because they were in multiple offer situations yep so yeah yeah, and, and but I, I can ask this question. I can add here. Yeah, I, put it. Put I it agree. In the Let me ask this because since we're on this moratorium and I'm getting the text and I can get the feedback from J Man and Marky, I agree the landlords have their own financial problems, but it's generally the people at the bottom of the food chain who bear the brunt of the crisis. And challenging the government's authority to issue the moratorium in the midst of a pandemic just looks mean, not good PR. And do you think that most landlords are going to seek evict only the people who? Uh, choose not to pay, I doubt it. Those people will fight back while the poor will not be able to fight. There are there are programs out there for people yeah. if you cannot afford your rent. Yeah, there are some the people out there that chose too, right? not to pay because they could. Right, exactly right. So there's an assumption, right, that because you're a landlord, you have money. Right. And so they're, they're poor landlords, especially in underserved communities. OK, so if you are a landlord, let's say in the city of Chicago on the south and the west side, it is very likely you're getting the least amount of rent for the same identical three bedroom, two bathroom unit. Right. And I often say selling real estate while a minority often puts you in a lower price bracket, especially in cities where we have economical and racial segregation, which is what we see in the city of Chicago. And so I, I don't have a lot of empathy for tenants because I understand they're poor landlords. And at the end of the day, not only are we jeopardizing that rental property, you're also potentially jeopardizing 
their primary residence. So I think there might be an assumption that, and, and there are subsidy programs. Right now, it's never been a better time in this world to not have money. Hence the reason they're not going to work because the unemployment supersedes, like I got a whole lot of stuff that I could just vent about on this whole situation. Um, but I think there should be empathy for right. those who save their money, bought real estate, and provided fair, fair housing, yeah. economically Affordable. in good condition, mm -hmm. that someone would withhold payment for them, not work with them, not seek every subsidy in order to pay their bills. It is, I ain't your parent, right? So I don't owe you housing. I'm, you Let know. me say this. So, cause, cause people need to understand there, I mean, in Illinois, we had um, Illinois rental payment program because the governor of Illinois approved $1.5 million in May of 2021 to help for housing assistance. So if you are someone that couldn't pay, afford your rent, if you, if you, if you Google, and if you're a landlord, Google help that tenant help you get your money back, but yeah. they will pay directly to the landlord. They will yeah. pay the money directly to the landlord. I think it's a and national I'll program that energy. each state was allotted some money in, in that program, right. right? So I think if you're in New York, you could do it too. Uh, but we, we have, this might be a good topic to kind of finish off with as well. Liz Sell Close, she said, there's a lot of deals falling through in my area because they are under appraising. So let, let's talk a little bit about that uh, in, in negotiating those multiple offers. As a listing agent, it's, it's up to you to have that conversation. We call it appraisal gap coverage. And we're evaluating multiple offers. Who's going to cover an appraisal gap? Is it all of it or how much of it would you be willing to cover as, as the buyer of that property? How are, how are you guys handling that? So <clears throat> I was reading text messages again, Jeremiah. Right. No, but I, I guess I, I, I'm, I am, I am. Uh, they I'm blowing us up. Focused. Huh? I'm focused. I so, you. right. So when it comes to the a properties, not appraising, if you have multiple offers, there is probably someone now, depending on the area. Now, this is where J man, I do go back to educating yeah. the seller, because if I'm in a marketplace that typically has, um, a person that's coming in with 3% or three and a half percent down and asking for closing costs. I go look at the data, look at the history. Then I educate myself. If this is what's happening. No one, people aren't coming in um, and they have extra cash to put down. But if I'm in a marketplace where I'm seeing people are putting down extra cash, we might negotiate. Are you willing to um, come pay the additional funds over the amount that didn't appraise? There are some people, that are saying that they you know, I heard the term waive the appraisal. You can't waive the appraisal, yeah, but if you put down 50%, the appraisal doesn't matter anymore because well, you've already invested into the property. They might do a desktop. So we have, like we have documents in Illinois that allow the agents to write an, well, it allows the buyer working with the agent to present an offer saying that if the home doesn't appraise, we will pay X over the un the the amount that didn't appraise so that's how we're handling it here yeah i mean we're we're doing something similar because it, again it's evaluating like if i have a property that's selling for three hundred thousand dollars and all offers are about the same right 30 300 305 303 over they come in at but the they're all 20 percent down then we go to each one and say oh, how much of the appraisal gap if it you know and we're optimistic if it does happen, how much you're willing to cover? And then it comes to, we'll cover all of it. We'll call it, if they're getting conventional financing 20% down, the likelihood is they could probably get 5% conventional, right? And then if there's any gap, kind of cover with that 15%. So just have that conversation with, with your sellers and, you know, with the buyers. Look, if they were paying cash, there wouldn't be an appraisal, right? It's what the buyer is willing to pay. It, it all depends on how, how you look at it. Right. It's all, it, it really depends. So it's, it's like, you know, when, when, when I first started selling real estate, I remember the managing broker at this time, you know, she said, you educate your buyers. When you walk in, it's like, you know, me going to buy a car. If you go in and you react and you're like, I love it. I have to have it. Then you are probably going to pay over and above. Like how bad do you have to have it? Are you willing to walk away? So, so yeah. Anything else, J-Man, are we seeing in the feed? I got to catch up. I know you usually, uh, 
uh, usually not my my territory, but we got some good stuff here. Um, and let's just shout out some of the people. We got Ebony Killian, always a, a faithful fan. Thank you, Ebony. Sabrina Lowry, uh, List Sell Close. I don't know who that is, but I'm gonna call you List Sell Close. For, thank you for contributing. Uh, who else we got? Rose Bogosian from Wisconsin. Princess Gonzalez. She's in Illinois and Las Vegas now. Um, I saw that. Congratulations, Princess. Anita Bryan. Rachel Rachel in New York. That's what I'm talking about, Rachel. One of my favorite students. Um, let's keep it going. Let's see how I scroll up. If I'm not shouting you out, it's because you didn't post anything in the comments, my people. Uh, but, okay. Ca so, Carrie, why don't you plug Coffee with Carrie? What are you going to be talking about this Friday um, so they can tune in? Oh, well, so this Friday, every Friday, every Friday morning on Instagram, I go live for Coffee with Carrie. And this, I am talking about building wealth as an agent starts with your why. Why did you get into real estate? And is your why motivating you to do the business? Live awesome. every Friday at 9 a.m. Central Daylight Standard Time. Central Daylight. Well, and guess what? At 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, you also have Ask the Experts Anything Meaningful Friday, A-Team Friday. Uh, this Friday, we're going to be talking about prospecting, opportunity knocks. I'm about to teach you, break it down scientifically, how you can knock on doors successfully in this real estate market out here in these real estate streets, as Marky would say. And Marky, you have an Friday event coming up on July 7th. I do. I have a three-week face-to-face -face series at 7300 South Cottage Grove. It is my coming back, coming out, six-figure series, face-to-face. -face. And so we're doing that on July the 7th, the 18th, no, July the 7th, the 15th, and the 22nd from noon to 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. So if you're in the Chicagoland area, I want to educate you, baby. Hey, I want to educate you. Let's talk about this driving alley mastery. What? <laughs> well, and then the last save the day, it's going to be August 13th. We're doing a big event. All three of us in one location, in person, live, talking about we don't know what yet. We don't know where it's going to be yet, but it's going to be great. So just save the date, August 13th, <laughs> the entire day. Uh, we're going to be somewhere. I mean, we, you guys know better in the Chicago land area, Chicago land area. Okay. Yeah. I'm, let's go with that. I'm flying in. It's going gonna, gonna, it's, it's gonna to be lit. We'll have a meet up the night before. It's going to be we'll lit. Something. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. It's, yeah, it's be power packed. And then I'm flying out to Georgia to, to, for women's council, Atlanta for my, a Monday event. So yeah, it's going to be, that'll be a power pack weekend. Oh, it will be. Yeah. I think I'm coming back from, uh, Hawaii that week with the Utah Realtors. Just, just, just keep it. Just keep I popping just, it. Just keep popping that. Yeah. Go ahead, girl. Uh, then, then I'm going to Lake Tahoe with um, Celebration and then the Arizona Resort. Like, I'm going to tell you, my August is on and popping, boo. Yeah, so on and popping. I'll be if, back in Florida, too. If you're looking to book Marcus, she only likes resort destinations. You know, it's got to <laughs> don't be right. tell that lie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't tell that lie. <laughs> look, look, inbox me. I'm coming where you're flying, baby. I'm coming where you're flying. You look, and everybody knows I will travel by plane, boat, train, bus. I've been on Greyhound, Mega Bus. I'm going to get there. Amtrak, you tell me I'm coming. And she's coming through the mountains. Through the mountains, boo. Uh, Montana. I, I oh Montana yeah I, I was in Montana I was in Cincinnati last week I want to tell you this I got in at three o'clock in the morning and my event started at ten o'clock oh man I would not even be focused I didn't even get I into the hotel until four because the Uber surge pricing went from forty five dollars to one hundred ninety five dollars and then the Lyft took thirty minutes to get me I, I I was I felt like I was getting punked. You know, but <laughs> I just want to say, like, when you're committed to something like all of us are, there's nothing that's going to stop us. Just like anybody who's watching this, you're committed to real estate. One thing that's that's for sure is that the market will always change. And as long as you stay connected with us, we're going to make sure that you're successful at it, making more than six figures in 12 months. You're going to have to probably change that for next year. It's going to have to be like mid six figures in 12 months or something, Marky. I'm just going to keep it six figures in 12 months. <laughs> 
All right, I think this is a... Uh, we're going to do... Are we doing the clubhouse after party, even though Marky can't make it because she deleted her clubhouse app? <clears throat> well, I thought we were going live well, let everybody during know. the event. I but deleted I can do clubhouse, it. everybody. I deleted clubhouse, Snapchat, TikTok, uh, and Twitter. Uh, and with no intentions on going back, I plan on taking that time and focusing on lipedema awareness. Some of you know I was diagnosed with lipedema eight mm -hmm. weeks ago. 17 million American women have it, 370 million women worldwide. It is undiagnosed. I say underdiagnosed, it is undiagnosed. And I want women to stop thinking they fat. They got lipedema, a fat disorder, and once they know, they can do something about it. So I let go of all that stuff so I can focus on advocacy. All right. Well, we'll we'll hop over to Clubhouse for a little bit. We're going to let Marky go back and enjoy her. Welcome to Miami. Go get it, girl. Um, let's hit him with some straight fuego on the way out. Clubhouse link is will be in the comments. Peace out, everybody.